Welcome to Wellesley. This is my new parish. It's an unusual parish because there is no church building. There are no congregations. The people who will live here have yet to move in. In Romans, Paul writes, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. This is where I'll be living, my new home. So this is where it starts, in a living room. A few people meeting, praying, worshipping God. Sounds like the early church to me. I wonder how they felt at the beginning, not quite knowing what God was going to do among them. Whatever God does here, I hope that it's a transforming presence for our community. setting up today for the Sheer Albury and Chilworth tent service and this is something we have every year. There's produce show in the Saturday, there's a barn dance in the evening on the Saturday, Sunday we got the tent service and the brilliant Albury music festival in the afternoon. We're really looking forward to today's tent service because Bishop Andrew is coming. As far as Albury is concerned my predecessor came and built up something of a ministry with families and children and young people. While keeping things going for the traditional people, he introduced new forms of worship, new music, and established a pattern that's really been going here for a number of years now. And I'd say we're probably in a transitional period at the moment. We need to rethink that and see what's right for the community today. And communities don't stand still, and churches don't either. Well, one of the first things that we did was to establish a new church council that had a real passion to see the church grow and that had experience of church growth. And we've been able to make a lot of changes and do a lot of new ministry as a result. So the first service at nine o'clock is a common worship Holy Communion. So it's a liturgical service in booklets. So it's very structured. The second service is much less structured, less liturgical, much louder because it's led by a band rather than an organ. The songs are almost entirely contemporary and has a very different flavour to it. I found St Mary's brilliant. Um, the people were very welcoming. Um, they they opened up and I, I managed to let down my barriers very easily, um, which helped me in my journey to faith. Um, it feels like a rocket's been attached to me and it's been sent up to the sky and I still haven't come down yet. At St Mary's there is a variety of different people and there's something for everyone. So we come home from church, we're able to talk to our children about what they've learnt and just it helps us communicate better with each other. Our, our relationship at home has become closer and we're able to do more and sort more and talk more. So I've been vicar here for about five years and we're, uh, I suppose, the central tradition of the Church of England, liberal Catholic, uh, although I've never really been that much of a party person. But for me, the sacraments here are really absolutely key and really important and that's a big part of our tradition. Uh, but more than that, it's also about how we connect with people. So it's about making those sacraments accessible uh, in a way that really works for people in their modern everyday lives. We realised that uh, we have a lot of children in this area and whilst we've been doing a sort of normal, 9.45 sung Eucharist service in the morning. We needed something that really met those needs in a specific way and that's why we started the Shush Free service. We call the service Shush Free because we recognised that a lot of parents when they bring their children to church sometimes feel slightly anxious that they'll be disturbing the service in some way. So we wanted something specific uh, that would allow them to come and relax and enjoy themselves. Well, my parish responsibility has been to double the number of baptisms that we do. At the end of last year, we had 30 baptisms, and we're hoping within two years to get it up to 60 a year. One of the things that we've done is we've changed the baptism liturgy to make it more accessible, more easy to understand for people. We've also changed the preparation as well, so people now come along to two preparation sessions before the baptism, and then a session afterwards as well, a kind of see how it went session with everybody. 
We created the service about 40 minutes long. It's non-Eucharistic, but it has a lot of the other elements of our services in it. Uh, and the slightly unusual thing we do is at the end we have Prosecco and uh, a homemade lemonade, uh, which is slightly unusual, but it means that people hang around afterwards and chatted. And we started to real build a real community around that now. We just really love coming. It's a really friendly service. Um, the band's amazing, the songs are great, the children really love to, in, to join in with all the action songs. It's just a more relaxed environment, you know, the children can stand up on the chairs and, and dance around and join in too, which I think is good. Um, so I think it's just, you know, so much more exciting for the children. And then there's the added incentive for the Prosecco at the end as well, which I think people enjoy. We think now there's probably 20% of our population are from Nepal. So as a church, we really wanted to make them feel welcome and we wanted to share our faith with them. We wanted to be part of helping them integrate into this local community as well. Many of the people who come have got little or no English and uh, helping them integrate was really going to depend upon them being able to communicate. So we set up some English language classes to help them. Teachers are all volunteers from the congregation and from other local churches and we also have some six formers, Nepali six formers who come in to help us with translation. We've been doing it about six years and uh, the impact on me is just the, the love God's given me for the Nepali people. I just remember when I started I was very nervous of speaking to them but I just love talking to them, meeting them in the street now and uh, really engaging with them and their language. Well, we're a very mixed community of, of, of different needs. Uh, very much uh, there are areas of real underprivilege and disadvantage, and families and children have, require quite a lot of support in this area, so particularly in the area of food and, and clothing. We have referrals on a weekly or daily basis for families in need. There was a language barrier, and the more we are, you know, we are helping them to fill the gap between so they feel like they are integrated here. They feel, uh, you know, more related with the people. Well, as you can see, the church here is really quite small. And when I came here two years ago, um, I realized that I had a lovely congregation, um, but some of them were retired. In fact, a lot of them were retired. And then I didn't have many people in the middle, and then I had a whole bunch of teenagers. And what I realised is Sunday by Sunday, the teenagers were going out to Sunday school. And I kind of thought, well, isn't it about time they stayed and worshipped here in church with us? So we started up the youth group on a Sunday evening for teenagers. Um, and it's for teenagers that were already coming to the church, um, but not getting what they wanted on a Sunday morning. Well, this was in the evening, and it was lots of fun, but it wasn't really worship. Um, working with the young people and the rest of the team here. Um, and developing the worship on Sunday morning so it reaches young people and children and families. Um, I came back and came to the service but it's quite a traditional service and I felt the more formal style wasn't really me and uh, I was looking for something more contemporary, a bit more informal, a bit more of an intimate worship setting that I'd really like to see. We don't have the musicians to have a live band but we do have a couple of singers and a couple of people who might be able to strum on a guitar so pairing that with the app it creates the feeling of a live band without actually having one which is really cool. Um, the youth have had time to kind of experiment with worship and now they're really wanting to bring that into a larger scale and then we've got these new people coming in really chomping at the bit to do something new so we're going to start uh, we're starting in September, so we'll have the Parish Eucharist at 9.30 and then we're going to come through here into the hall where we're going to have our new service of worship and it's going to be experimental. It's going to be pe think something that we want people to come and get involved in, not just participate in. And the key thing is we want people to be able to connect with God and with one another. It's going to be great. Chaplaincy is absolutely the heart of what makes the Priory School distinctive and inclusive. Um, through our chaplaincy team, made up of eight chaplains, including Rachel and Lucy, uh, we're able to offer a range of opportunities, including the Be Me programme and the development of a strength programme for boys, allowing them to explore their identity and their purpose. Yeah.
air, go Jordan. Has anyone got an elephant? The girls are working on a mood board which is part of the She Is programme. This is a secular programme but it's written with Christian principles. It's um, looking at becoming yourself and it looks at tools of how to cope with life in difficult situations. Other schools are now uh, taking it on and we have done it in other schools in the area. I started the course two years ago now because I was told that it would help me and I didn't think it would and then when I started it really helped my anxiety. It was a really fun place to be, quite relaxing and it was just a safe place to talk to other people. It also leads into another course, She Is Deeper, which is Exploring Faith. These girls have done uh, the Be Me course and they want to go deeper and explore faith a little bit. So this course is about identity, truth and purpose found in Jesus. And it explores the Bible story, The Woman at the Well, uh, in, we found it in John 4. And we uh, look at our identity in Christ. I think I found Be Me a really gentle course to explore and it was good that faith in God wasn't forced. So that was good. Um, I found one of the most helpful things was that we watched a video on how people see differently to how you see yourself and we explored it into how Jesus would be more accepting of us than we are of ourselves. So it started with the logo, we wanted something really friendly and welcoming and we went all the way through, we looked at um, notice boards, we looked at the pew sheets and tried to make them very missional, outward focused, not inward focused. Um, I was in training and I drove past this church on the way to a meeting and I noticed the new signs uh, and I wondered if there was new life here and if this was the place for me. And now I'm the new curate. Our experience is that it's really important. All of this technology really helps us to reach out. So this was an idea that we had that when people come to church, instead of there being a rotor, people could just come in and pick up a job for them to do each week. Um, and this went viral. I put it on the blog and we had 33,000 hits. It was also all over Facebook. And I think that's the power of social media, that we've got perhaps a fringe of a thousand people, um, whereas we've only got a hundred people on the electoral roll, and it enables the community to journey with us. I think social media with the church is useful because it's always just there at my fingertips and I use Facebook quite a lot and it always just pops up so it's quite useful for me because I wouldn't pick up a leaflet and it's, Leslie always keeps in contact with me and I think it's pretty cool that she uses Facebook and social media. The important thing is to see the press as your friend and not as your enemy and not to be afraid of them. Local churches really need to remember that they've got a good news story that they need to communicate and that local media wants to know about it. It wants to know about the stories of love, forgiveness, redemption, community. It's been great to see these stories of God at work through individuals and churches uh, in their communities and just a tiny snapshot of what's going on. And it's been great too to have more than 1,500 people involved in helping us shape the, the vision for the diocese and uh, really coming up with this idea of a, a transforming church, transforming lives. Uh, as part of that vision, we're looking to uh, develop 100 new worshipping communities uh, across the diocese, particularly for those who, for whom normal church just is very, very unfamiliar. Uh, we're looking to grow the number of ordinands. We have a shortage of those going forward into ordained ministry and also encourage uh, all people, all baptised believers to step up to the plate really and live out their full potential as children of God. So I'm excited by this and I'd really encourage everyone to get on board.